welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? And we have Tom. Hello, I'm here. I'm here with uh, my good pal. Uh, it's a little <laughs> bit chilly in uh, in this house, so uh, we're kind of getting all, all bundled up here. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have uh, those awesome mittens there bernie oh uh, by the way uh, you can you can actually buy uh apparently a a teacher buys them and uh or uh makes them, makes them. yeah they are totally made in the usa and uh made from recycled and reclaimed materials so uh, if you'd like to get your hands on some of those it's great i've just got these uh yeah. typical hacker fingerless gloves <laughs> get, those are some hacker gloves for sure on some yep. of those yeah uh, did ah. you guys see the actual like crocheted Bernie Sanders in the, the chair with the yeah. mittens? It's so like, great. Do you see the Lego one? They made that quick. Yeah, they did. No, I didn't see the Lego. So, one. so why has this become such memes. a meme? I mean, just how random. could it not? It's I don't know. He's just like sitting there with, and I mean, he's just sitting there <laughs> like it's not. So I heard initially some people like I saw an article where some people were initially making fun of the mittens, and then they realized. Oh how they were made and then they quickly backtracked oh okay but i think part of it is just how casual he looked i mean he just yeah. had a standard old winter coat yep. and some mittens on yeah the man which i mean front. he's from vermont right so i mean oh. like he or is it new he's up northeast i can't remember if it's vermont or new hampshire but either way the dude knows what it's like to be cold so he wore stuff <laughs> not to be cold <laughs> yep it has it has produced some cool memes though. Um, I saw one. Oh, dude, those memes are great. <laughs> I saw it's one where he's fire. on the Iron Throne. I saw one where he's the guy in the opening scene of Skyrim in the cart with you instead of that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen one where he's in the octagon for like UFC and he yes, has someone in an armbar. Where he's bar. got the armbar. That one is so yep. good. <laughs> yeah, that one is awesome. I love the armbar one. Uh, man. So we don't go political. I'm not making this political, but there's I also one with Joe political. Biden. <laughs> there's one with Joe Biden looking out the window. It's like, I have mittens too. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really political, though. It just involves I know. politicians. Mittens are always political. Also, is this a new Rocket Labs map that hasn't been released yet? I kinda, guess it is. I, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know this was I a, really like a map. It. It's kind of neat. And mittens are political because it's mittens or gloves, man. Yeah. Mittens or yeah, gloves. Like, They're gloves this, without fingers. This is the political, like, uh, the political calculus of our time, right? What do you do? Is it, are you a mittens man? Or are you a gloves man? Like, mittens, your fingers are close together. It's probably got better heat. But yep. you lose the dexterity. For me, I'm a gloves yeah. man. Not going to lie. Definitely gloves. It it all depends, man. Like, this fall, I wish I had mittens. I was starting to, uh, my fingers were starting to get super fucking cold when I was out hunting because I was wearing gloves. You gotta get you gotta get those ones that are gloves, but then they also have the mitten part that you can like flip oh, over. Yeah. But so the the downside like is a, an independent or like a I don't know I'm gonna look at the issues kind of voter. We can't have that. <laughs> well, like, nah. so there is actually a downside to those though. I've never found a pair that work great because the glove aspect it's always thinner material than standard gloves. Oh, yeah. and okay. for the actual mittens, you still get circulation of the air in there, which oh, kind of yeah. sucks. So well, somebody needs I mean, to make some of those that are actually quality. Yes. There's no room for nuance in this conversation. Your mittens or your gloves. If you're trying to do both, you've already lost. I am a gloves guy, though. I value yeah. dexterity. If I had to choose one, yeah. gloves, for sure. Ah, but yeah, those, those memes. <laughs> yeah. Those memes are great. I had another one, but I can't remember what the fuck it was. I just remember it was good, like all memes. Yeah. Anyway, how's y'all week? Uh, it's fine. Yeah, fine is a way fine. to put it. <laughs> Tom, were you able to sustain, still sustain busy? yourself with food? Oh, my God. No, it even goes beyond that. Okay, so we went to go put gas in the car because it was kind of low. I mean, not like dangerously low. We're like, all right, we got some time. Throw some gas in the car. Chill out. Maybe go for a drive on, on like Saturday or something. So we put gas in the car and we get a yellow check engine light. Usually for, for the car we've got, that means, hey, I'm a dumbass. I didn't screw in the gas cap tight enough. Cool. Dealt with that for a little bit. Didn't go away. We're like, all right, it's probably something dumb like a spark plug. Who cares? Uh, so we took it out for a drive just to see if the thing would correct itself. Um, it 
did not. As a matter of fact, uh, the speedometer was uh, stuck at hard zero. Um, not really something you want to do while uh, while driving down the road is not have any telemetry. Tachometer <laughs> was stuck at zero. Engine oil was stuck at zero. Like literally everything was stuck at zero except for the gas gauge. Amazingly enough. So uh, we had the mechanic come check it out, which by the way, the mechanic uh, that we decided to pick on a random fucking Google search did house calls. Guy came up, oh. grabbed the keys, wasn't in any kind of like mechanic outfit or anything. So I just handed some random guy the key after he said, oh, Tom, is, uh, is this your car? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I handed him the keys. And then I thought, hmm, maybe I should have checked his creds or something because uh, – I literally just handed this man the keys. Two months from now. <laughs> two months from now, mom. Um, hey, uh, I, I still haven't heard back. Uh, yeah. How's my car? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was just waiting for that shit. Um, so they found out that it looks like uh, something called the instrument cluster, which is basically uh, one of the computer components in the car responsible for all of the instrumentation. And uh, when that goes bad, it can be over a thousand bucks to fix just for the part, not even for the work that they did. And I'm oh. like, ah, shit. So this car is fairly old. It's not like ancient, but it's old enough that I don't want to put a whole bunch of money into it. It's probably not worth keeping alive. Um, so, yeah, that was that was fun. The mechanic keeps it for a few days just to do their due diligence, make sure that they have the diagnostic, right? Like, they did fantastic work. I can't say enough good about this mechanic. Um, but they called me and they said, yeah, we checked everything we could, but what ended up happening is we unplugged everything, plugged it back in, and, uh, yeah, it all works, dude. <laughs> it's, like, it's like nothing happened. So either the problem's intermittent... And that's going to be super annoying or it's fixed. And it was just a loose connector. Like we don't fucking know, but uh, we'll get it back to you. <laughs> like what the fuck? But so the whole week, <laughs> like I'm freaking out and we're doing research. We're calling dealerships. We're trying to get uh, quotes on new cars. Cause we know this thing's going to be way too much money to fix. And uh, yeah, no, nah, just unplug it, plug it back in. Wow. Hey, if it can get you through the pandemic, and you can actually car shop after that's yeah. a win. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly true. where we're at. I don't want to go car shopping during the pandemic. That sounds just awful, but uh, yeah, no. on food, on food. This is where yeah. I wanted to go. <laughs> Yesterday I ordered from a place. I'm going to call it out. It's called non and curry. You know what they have? Non and curry. You know what yeah. they should have had? Nothing. Yeah. What? So we get it, because I've been craving Indian food for a little bit. I ordered naan and curry, just got tikka masala, got some garlic naan. Like, the most basic shit you can get from, like, uh, uh, in an Indian place in America, right? Super basic shit. I open the container, and it doesn't smell right. Like, it smells off, way too vinegary, like, even sour, hmm. which is kind of weird. So I was like, all right, we'll try it. It tasted like they just grilled some chicken and dumped it into pre-made sauce. So it didn't have, there was no consistency to anything. The, those flavors did not get to know each other. You would take a bite of the chicken <laughs> and it tastes just like fucking grilled chicken with shit laid on top of it. The sauce itself was so bad, it almost had, I apologize in advance, it almost had a vomit-esque quality to it. Really oh. fucking Awful. It was bad enough. I got three bites in and dumped the entire thing into the trash. I'm one of those wow. guys where if something's not great, but it's edible, I'll power through. I'll eat it. I'm a goddamn man. I'm a fat ass. I have I have no quality bar whatsoever. I threw this away. Wow. So I tried again today with a place that I'm not going to name because they're usually fire. A local Indian place that I've gone to in person several times. I ordered chicken korma again. Pretty basic and garlic naan. The naan was fantastic. The chicken korma was bland. I got bland Indian food. I even that ordered doesn't exist. <laughs> I know. I've never had a bland Indian food. I've had this some that the... are better than others, but none of them were anywhere near what I would call bland. Exactly. I even ordered a medium spice level, which I'm expecting, you know, white guy medium spicy, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, this guy, 
this guy is an American. He doesn't handle this spice well. We're going to give him like a small amount of spice, which that's fine. It wasn't even spicy. It was literally just bland. It uh, did like the chicken and the sauce did gel well together. Like it tasted like it was cooked right, but just an overwhelming amount of nothing. Tom's so going to be my, all dealt with Indian food after pandemic. He's going to open a fucking Indian restaurant. Oh my yeah. God. If I could, if cook, you I think would. flaming hot Cheetos are too hot, you can't eat here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, if you can't so handle my, Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. I, I call my wife the bloodhound. She can, she has got a goddamn nose. I mean, she I most cannot, people do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's true. She cannot handle the smell of Indian food. Like it just, yeah. the spice palette that they use, it just doesn't agree. So Human. she could not smell this Indian food. That's how bland it was. Like it, usually <laughs> she has to leave the room when I'm eating Indian food. She didn't smell anything Ooh. it was just bland wow. i might give it a try tomorrow but i'm kind of demoralized guys how many times have you been to that place uh i don't know at least 10 like yeah. probably eight in person and then two ordering huh. from uh from like delivery and they've always been solid that's unfortunate hmm. yeah. Maybe they got a different workers or different chefs or yeah i don't know new management or something i don't know bad day yeah. It's just unfortunate. Could have just been a bad day. I might try yet a, another restaurant tomorrow, but we'll see. I'm just, I'm disappointed, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Folo. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you watching the cast of playing Rocket League. Um, but yeah, it was, man, it was just unfortunate. Oh, I just now saw he responded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That always catches me off guard. I don't expect people we're playing against to actually watch the show. <laughs> so, uh, Fandemonious um, called out he's playing Wii Bowling. Uh, so, Dave, it makes me think, had a bowling game he found for VR. Dude, that shit was in depth. I can't remember what it was fucking yeah. called, but, like, they actually, you would choose your oil pattern for the lane. What? Like, we are talking very in-depth bowling. That is nuts. You have different balls that have different like cores, so they have different spin rates different, and bullshit like that. Different, Oil patterns are a thing for high level bowling. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, okay. I've never heard that in my life. I was like, what? So like, <laughs> uh, so you could see. Okay, so I thought the only I thought your only down. lane choice was bumpers or no bumpers. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it global? <laughs> Do you have do they have the global mold enabled? People don't choose. It's just that it's something that happens. Like, so picture uh, a ball as it's going down a lane, and you see it spinning a ton. And then all of a sudden, you notice the spin catches. A lot of that has to, I mean, granted, eventually it catches even on the oily. But as it eventually gets out of the oil patterns mm -hmm. and gets out to like the non-oiled or less oiled part of the track, it starts to catch more. So like the pattern of that is how like it'll impact how your ball cuts whenever you're curving and stuff. But like this game fucking allows you to choose your patterns and shit, which is yeah. awesome. I wow. see in chat the Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich has been mentioned. Yeah. If I could get on that, I would get on that, but there are no Wendy's near me. Like I've oh. got I've got a McDonald's and I think that's about it. Like we've got the oh. a bunch of random stuff on DoorDash, but Wendy's and Taco Bell are just oh, man. gone. The Taco that Bell sucks. near me Those are my has two. changed from <laughs> under construction, which it's been for the past two years, to yeah. permanently closed. <sighs> I, I've got I have, both near me. Yeah, me too. I have to call out, though, talking about the Wendy Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Excellent sandwich. But if you want to splurge a little bit, have something a little extra nice, get the Asiago Club oh, sandwich so with the spicy um, chicken patty. It oh. Is, it is. I'm into that. Yes. Okay. It is. Yes. The Asiago Ranch. It's got ranch, Asiago cheese, bacon. Lettuce, tomato, spicy chicken sandwich. Fantastic. That's so, my go-to um, Wendy's I think, order. I think this is Dawson calling out that uh, he doesn't like Taco Bell. I, I understand. It. I do understand. I, yeah. I don't agree, but I, I understand. I love Taco I mean, Taco Bell's probably, I have a soft spot for Taco Bell. Taco Bell. I know it's garbage topic. food, but it doesn't pretend to not be garbage <laughs> food, and I respect it. There's a lot of variety yeah. there, which is nice. 
I mean, yeah, it's sorta. the same five yeah. ingredients in different shapes, but I appreciate everything it is. They have the best fries in all of fast food. Fries? You've Talk never had their nacho fries? I have never had nacho fries, no. No. Dude. Yeah. Oh, I will they say they are... have the, the best breakfast in all of fast food, hands down. Yes, I agree. Absolutely agree. Um, But also, uh, Tom, something for you. I don't know if you ever had it. The spicy McChicken? While it it's may not, not be a... Bad. Yeah, I was going to say, while it may not be Wendy's level, it's pretty good. Yeah. And it's cheap. It's really cheap. We've been getting uh, Jack in the Box's spicy chicken, which is actually pretty decent. Like, it's it's no Wendy's, but it ain't bad. I've had Jack in the Box once. I did not enjoy it. They are way too expensive for what they are, for sure. I mean, they're subpar stoner food. Yeah. I mean, that's all they are, because they have so much variety. That's their only calling card, is you can get a cheeseburger with fucking spring rolls and tacos. Mav, next time you go to Wendy's, you gotta get that Asiago chicken. It is, it is legit. How, how would you describe the flavor of Asiago cheese? Oh, man. I, it's, I almost I mean, want to call it a complex Swiss. It's rich. It's not as like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's more rich. It's like in between a cheddar and a Swiss, kind of. Yeah. It's not as like dirty feet tasting as Swiss. <laughs> and it's it's not as but, bitey as the cheddar. Yeah, it's, it's not as yeah. bitey as cheddar. It's good. And a hydration request, fellas. Mary um, Browns? I've never even heard of Mary Browns. Oh, I'm going to get this in before our next match real quick. Okay, I bought some new hardware because I wanted to play Red Dead Redemption and eat beans and ride horses in bed. Um, I got another 8-bit dough SN30 Plus uh, controller. I love these things. But the new thing that I got is this little guy. Ah, what the fuck is that? This tiny brick is... A USB? USB. Hey, and it's got a button here. And you know why I got it? Even though the controller is wireless, this makes it super trivial to attach to any other platform. PS4, yep. Raspberry Pi, yep. You don't need to do anything. It's got a button on the brick. You hit the button, you sync the controller, you're done. It makes it super trivial to add the 8-bit toe controller to literally any hardware you have. Uh, it works on PS4, it works on the Switch. I think it works on the Xbox too, but I haven't tested that. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. And the little dongle, I want to say it was 10 bucks. So oh, that's, yeah, it's cheap. Do you have to pair it every time you plug it in? Nope. Pair nice. it and just fucking plug it in. That's it. That's awesome. It feels like, uh, you know, the wireless adapter for the Xbox 360 controllers, how easy that was to get working on PC? Feels like that. Oh, I've I never used about, it. I actually forgot about that. <laughs> I've never played great. wireless on computer. I've only yeah, ever played think, wired. Yeah. I don't think I have either, but I remember I seeing I love it. wireless on PC because I've got my PC hooked to the TV. So I just sit back, chill, and I will play me some Witcher 3 or uh, or now Red Dead Redemption 2. I've always played twitchy games, so I've always been afraid of going wireless. Mm. Even though in reality, I'm not good enough for it to really matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you I'm being You honest, can still I'm feel not. the difference probably, I guess. In a game like this, maybe. And Rocket League. Potentially. Um, I've played this with uh, with wireless, but then again, I'm I'm trash at Rocket League, so because I I've got an issue, I've got to figure out my cord problem here. Like I have way too many fucking cords, especially since I have like an interface and like HDMI splitters for like capture cards and bullshit. I've got to yeah. find a way to clean up this mess. Is it is it just like behind your PC tower that everything is just chaos well, or? My tower's on my right here, or left for people potentially, but my monitors are on the opposite side. So like the cables are going around underneath the desk, pop back up. Then I have like a power strip with like multiple lights into it. And then my interface, oh. there's all sorts of shit. Like probably 10% of my entire house electrical bill comes off of my fucking desk. <laughs> <laughs> my electric bill this month was uh, $69.69. Nice. I hate you. That's nice. great. That is fantastic. <laughs> um, so on Red Dead Redemption 2, I have it on PS4 and I, I've only put a few hours into it. I bought it on PC because that's generally where I play everything. And after completing Cyberpunk, which I'll jump into here in a minute, 
I needed another big ass game to lose my life to. And what better <laughs> to go from futuristic cyborg urban environment to cowboys eating beans? Yeah. Nothing better. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very similar. So uh, how they're far are they're also two that? like giant AAA, like benchmark your PC kind of games too that are gorgeous. Holy shit. You are fucking kidding. So I I have a VR ring, right? It's not a bad PC. It's not top of the line, but I've got a 2080. I've got 32 gigs of RAM, a relatively recent i7. Like, it's it's a nice rig. I cranked Red Dead up, and I got 15 frames per second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That Ooh. game is no fucking joke. If you unlock those advanced graphics options and just slam that shit to the top, uh, yeah, it's, it ain't going to run well at all uh <laughs> so Dude, you got like any i mean does it there, dog. does it oh, look as good as it oh, should based on how bad it runs though oh my like, god like is the it optimization is, pretty good it is fucking gorgeous uh i just can't i don't have the umph to run it properly uh so i i knocked it down to medium i'm sitting at about 60 fps which me playing on parsec in bed through a raspberry pi through a wireless controller 60 fps is all i need for that yeah for that type um, of game, you don't need more than that. Yeah, like Red Dead is not a super twitchy game. At least not not the level I'm playing. No, at. no, it's not. It'd it's be nice if it had not. DLSS. Yeah. Oh, man, that'd be great. That's the only reason Cyberpunk ran as well as it did it, for me. Exactly. Because of yeah. DLSS. Same. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably two hours into Red Dead 2 now. So not you still haven't got through the still tutorial. the tutorial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Exactly. I've think, heard it's really slow. At, yeah, it's definitely a, a chill, relaxed game, which is why I decided, hey, I need a bedtime game. Oh. It should work just fine. It'll stop being a bedtime game for you. Oh. I, prom I promise. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's not that In the a good way. changes. It's that you won't go to bed. <laughs> it, it's a great story i mean the, the narrative to that game and the way that they tell the story they make the, at first it's slow and the game feels slow but eventually a lot of the slow elements of the game isn't done just to tell you a story but it is the mechanism of the story in a way that feels so good hmm. like writing place to place and getting story beats while you're writing in cinematic view like i didn't want to be at my objective yeah <laughs> Did, did you ever play GTA 5? Because they did very similar things in GTA 5 and, to, and 4 to a lesser extent. Not much. Like I okay. played GTA 5 in the extent of how I play most GTA games. I get in, I dick around, and I don't do much. Like I drive around the quest marker when characters were talking instead of you know getting where I needed to go. Well, Just to look around or to hear the dialogue? To hear the dialogue, mostly. Red Dead's like, hey, hold X if you just want the horse to follow a path. Also, hit that center button if you want to turn on cinematic view while this is going on. Cinematic view. That's cool. Great. That's cool. The cinematic view for that is just like, this is an engine? How in the fuck is this an engine? <laughs> I, so, I own it on PS4. How the fuck did Rockstar make a game look that good and play that smooth on console? It ran on a standard four fine jesus it was christ great. it was uh, it's amazing it's a technical marvel they're doing what gorilla games typically does they're doing what right. fucking sony santa monica typically does yeah but yeah um i, I want to hear more from you when you get deeper into it yeah for sure i'm glad you called also, out the cinematic I uh the cinematic mode thing because i remember that in the early gta games but it was pretty much useless because it was hard to drive around like that it was but the fact that to drive. Yeah, but the fact that they they kept that in for Red Dead and then gave you the option to just automatically follow with the horse, like finally yep. makes that a useful feature. And for a game like that, I I bet that just makes all the difference. It feels like a fucking movie. Yeah, and I know that's cliche for something called cinematic view, but like when you're yeah. doing story beats, doing it, it feels like a movie. Mm -hmm. Um. So speaking of movies, if if I hit cinematic view, it turns Red Dead Redemption 2 into a spaghetti western. Do I have to eat spaghetti while I'm playing? Is that a requirement? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shit. Yeah. We're going to need more spaghetti. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Also, back to the food. I missed something real quick. I just got to ask you guys. Do, were you guys aware that Burger King spicy chicken had like a creamy sriracha sauce? What? 
No, I don't, ever, I don't ever willingly go to Burger King. Yeah, nah. <sighs> I I could be starving on a desert island with a fully stocked Burger King, and I'd think about starving to death. I like Burger King. It's one I'm of my so favorite sorry. burgers. Like for fast food, it's one of my favorite burgers. Okay, the Whopper is the only solid thing at Burger. The stackers. If you get a good Burger, Burger King, which is the problem and that I've been yeah. having, is getting a Burger King that actually gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Ours doesn't get much attention, so all the shit tends to come out really hot because you're typically mm. waiting a long time to get it. The uh, the last time I got Burger King. We actually had to throw away the entire order because two of the sandwiches were moldy. Like physically Ugh. looking at the bread, it is green. You oh, can't blame that on Burger King. God. You got to blame that on the franchise yeah. owner. I mean, I can I can blame that on the Burger King I, mean, I went to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, yes. That's yes, yes. That's that's fair. that's. Well, I mean, like, like, horrendous though. I've never had yes. an actually moldy sandwich. <laughs> That's lawsuit like, level. Yeah. 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 We just we just threw it out. Like, what am I gonna do? Sue Burger King for being Burger King? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think the only time I've ever had something that was like actually spoiled from a any kind of restaurant, I was at this Chinese place, like a buffet, and they had the ice cream machine, and the ice cream oh. was sour. Oh, yeah. that would be so awful. It that was is not a bad good. wake up call. I don't think I've ever had bad, like not not taste good, but like actually like physically bad food from a restaurant I've ate at. Yeah. Uh, I've I had have... raw, I've had raw steak served to me. Um, like purple. Oh. <laughs> I went to uh, I went to IHOP once and was uh, in the bathroom all night with really really bad. Uh, I can't even call yep. it indigestion. It was just straight up food poisoning, mm. and I I thought something was wrong at first but i assumed it's fine they just missed putting this under the heat lamp i ordered like sausage and pancakes and the sausage links i got were cold they were actually like mm. from a fridge cold and i thought okay they just let this sit out for a little bit no nah, i that shit wasn't cooked i got pretty violently ill that night Ooh. it <laughs> was mm. only time i've had food awful. poisoning i was working with adam I had a honey ham sandwich in a cooler, but they were separated enough from the ice pack that oh, when I went no. to eat it, it was a little warm. I was hungry and I liked honey ham. I ate it. I couldn't touch honey ham for a year after yeah, that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Uh, Man. But anyway. Oh, yeah, games. we were talking about games, weren't we? Yeah. So, Tom, you like um, you're liking uh, Red Dead so far? Yeah, I, it plays great on PC. Um, controls well. Uh, it's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> uh, it it's, it uh, really taxes my system, but it's beautiful to look at. Okay, what about Cyberpunk? Okay, so Not I did Cyberpunk. Yeah. I completed Cyberpunk. That's a yes. whole reason I picked up Red Dead. Um, I put 65 hours into it. Um, really, I put 70 hours into it. I Over the course of me playing the game, I lost five hours to Broken Quests, where I had to reload save files. That's One of those a was a literal hour that I lost, and oh it was pretty near the, the uh, like intro of the game when I lost that. So I decided to, every roughly five minutes, I would hit escape, and I, I have memorized the key combination, right? Like, in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Start down X to restart your run, right? I had a memorized key combination for Cyberpunk 2077 to make a manual save of the game because I didn't even trust quick saves because those go away after a little bit. Because uh. you can't just slam F5. So I ended the game with nearly 300 manual saves. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's... uh, That's... And I, I do not feel like that was extreme. I feel like that was completely justified. So okay, yeah, 65 hours. Um, I love the story. I love the character development. I love the side quests. I loved most of the writing. Uh, I fucking love night city. It is a straight up vibe. Yeah. Like just running around that place or even, uh, even better standing in one place and just looking at the city go by is mm -hmm. fucking fantastic. That said, 
this is this is an early access title and that oh, is yeah, the bugs, two yeah. years from being finished uh, this game is completely hollow uh everything on the surface is glorious but even the quest design when you get when you peek under those covers a little bit because for a couple of the quests i did get curious and i said what happens if i do something differently and love doing that yeah. turns out that yeah for the majority of the the quests that i did doing things differently doesn't really amount to a whole lot like in the moment like with the dialogue you're just like holy shit yeah this this is really impactful and this feels really really good um like I, oh my god i cannot imagine playing through this again and seeing what kind of differences can happen uh no that wasn't the case at all it almost the exact same thing happens no matter what you pick um the biggest offender of course is a life path system if you pick street kid the game feels normal if you pick anything else it feels like oh uh you you were uh you're in corporate huh name every corporation <laughs> nah you're a street kid dog <laughs> fuck off um, <laughs> like it I, I had the corpo things lead to at least what i thought were easier encounters in the moment i didn't really see any i mean i went in as street kid um, the number one complaint I heard about the the alternative life paths is that even when your character is saying things, it feels like a different voice actor or the same voice actor on a different day saying the uh. lines. You'll get <laughs> you'll get like really weird, like like yeah, well fuck you, man. And you pick the corpo thing. It's just like yeah, but could you get me those TPS reports on Friday? And then the next one, it's like yeah, fuck off, <laughs> off. <laughs> like, uh, oh. okay. <laughs> So, uh, the weaponry feels great. Uh, revolvers, pistols, shotguns, they feel appropriately chunky and impactful. I loved the, the gunplay. It's, it's broken, especially towards the end of the game when you get something that's way too overpowered for your own good. Um, but it was fun. I, I do really like Cyberpunk. I think it's a 7 out of 10 on PC because it's just fucking unfinished. There are clear indications in the game of systems that should be there. Mm -hmm. Like you even get somewhat tutorialized on how these things will work before the game just says, nah, we're never going to go back to that ever again. Ever. That sucks. Huh. But I thought but, we were going to get that goal. <laughs> but the, com the common sentiment is, and we've talked about this the previous cast, we've talked about Cyberpunk. Um, despite all of that, it's still a really really cool experience overall yeah as long as you don't peek under the uh, under the hood at all if you do not try to interact with the world and you only play this like an <laughs> rpg and you're focused on the story it's a fantastic yeah. game as soon as you lift up those covers yeah, though man the whole world falls definitely apart. definitely broken in a lot of ways but um i i want to talk to you about the endings you got and yep. the story stuff, not on the cast because we don't want to spoil it for people. But, exactly. Uh, after the cast, we have to have a little chat for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's that's one thing that like I wanted to talk to you about in the pre-show, but like Irk's sitting there yeah, and he's not going to wait until it. it's finished. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so, I I love Cyberpunk. I um I did look up all the other endings. I feel I feel good about the one that I uh, that I got. Um, Good. But man, I love those characters. Yeah. I would I want an entire like I want Cyberpunk 2078 with just the same characters so I can like chill with uh with fucking Johnny and Pan Am and, and Judy more. Like fuck man. They there were some great moments in that game. Yeah, there really were. Even like wow. one off side characters that you will never see again had really great moments. So, and that's yeah. good whenever they're willing to have effectively a throwaway character have a really good moment. Because typically Dude. devs will try or writers will try to have that be the better, bigger characters. That way it feels more meaningful throughout. Mm -hmm. I had, there was early on in the game, there's one side quest that I had where I, I talked to somebody and I prevented them from doing something really dangerous and bad for themselves. And they said, oh yeah, I've got a lot to think about. I walked away and some shit happened. I I don't know how much I want to spoil this, but god damn, like even the one-off throwaway characters that you will never see again 
have really serious, impactful, emotional moments and fantastic writing. Uh, it's glorious. Uh, I felt the same way with The Witcher 3. Do I can hear bits of that soundtrack and then feel the emotions I felt during that point in the game during that soundtrack? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so that's good. good. I mean, that Never Fade good. Away. Oh. Never Fade Away was fantastic. Um, What's it called? Been Nice Knowing You or something like that. It's like the last yeah. song on the OST. Oh, oh, man. oh when the cello comes yeah. in, it destroys my soul. Yep. Ah, I gotta finish that game. <laughs> it's like it's. I'm I'm gonna break into a new story out out of segment. Um, they did just release the 1.1 patch. Uh, some people are experiencing uh, less problems. Uh, apparently, for some people, it has made the game actually playable. Uh, according to the subreddit, again, squeaky wheel, squeaky wheel problem applies here. Mm -hmm. um, the game is completely unplayable for some other folks, or it has massive performance issues. Um, I saw a whole lot of GIFs of NPCs refusing to use stairs anymore, which is kind of fun. They will get to stairs, and they would walk up and down them at one point in time, but uh, yeah, Not now bad. they just get to the bottom of the stairs and like, nah, fuck this, I'm going to find an elevator. <laughs> Um, like they became lazy Americans. They're like stairs. No, we're just was, lazy dog. Yeah, I man, I was about to make that joke. <laughs> wow. Ah. But yeah, if you're willing to put up with a broken early access title, I can still recommend Cyberpunk. Just really, really know what you're getting into. This game yeah. is good in spite of itself. All right. Well, while we're talking well, about uh, sort of broken early access titles, um, I've been ha having more, some more fun with Tarkov this week, and I think Urk has been too. Yeah, I put a little bit more time into it. How's um, your experience been so far this uh, week? Uh, I haven't played a whole lot this week, but I did get my Bitcoin farm up and running finally. Nice. So I've, I've, hit, I've hit some uh, some some good strides with that. Uh, that that's did, a pretty big threshold. <laughs> um yeah it is and with the prices of bitcoin right now they're like 400 some k a piece so being able to have mm -hmm. one of those every every day is nice even with with not very many graphics cards yeah um but, like what when you get it topped out it's like two a day uh you can get up to five a day with the level three with like 50 cards in it oof or but like, i mean it's worth it yeah but um, they've been doing a lot of stealth changes that have been really shaking up the like the in-game economy with with different items by because they're adding a bunch of new crafts and stuff and changing the prices of stuff and traders and changing what the traders offer with trades and barters and stuff. So they've been doing a lot of changes uh, very often without any kind of like patch notes or anything. <laughs> so they just like just change a bunch of stuff and then the economy goes wild. Like you can craft the more... X's now, which is like, which is huge. Yeah. Like one of the most it... expensive items in the game. So part of me likes this because it makes it feel more like a living economy. It's like the fact yeah. that, you know what? We don't need to tell you about all these little small changes. Just yeah. fucking let the game live. Maybe sometimes the, the trader will time... have this thing and sometimes they won't. Like it's more dynamic, and I know that's kind of what they're going for in the long run is a more dynamic, um, like trader system and availability of stuff. Yeah, and they kind of did that with like the Vaseline's too, where they dropped them from ten use to six because they don't want people just popping pain pills and painkillers as soon mm -hmm. as every raid starts. Yeah, they want it to be more of a situational use. Yeah, so I'm sure they're ga gathering a whole bunch of data as they make these changes and stuff, but it's been cool. Uh, it's been wild trying to keep track of what items are like worth picking up in raid and which ones aren't worth much anymore because, you know, a week ago matches were worth basically nothing, and now they're like 10k a pop, and like those little cricket lighters or whatever, because the fuel the the availability of fuel got so low people were using the like crappy craft barters and stuff and like stuff was actually worth money. Um, like like the crafting materials and stuff were worth money that were usually not worth hardly anything at all. So it's been really shaking up the... Like, you got to keep up 
Like, <laughs> how much is this thing worth? Yeah. Is it is it worth the craft anymore? Is it no longer worth it? You know, it's, you see, it's all kinds of stuff. I like that. Because I'm a guy who never really remembered prices until this wipe. So mm. it puts everyone down to my level because everything's always changing. <laughs> so I was always checking. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But no, it's been fun. Yeah, I I didn't play a whole lot this week. I played a little bit today. Typically, the weekend's my Tarkov time. And my economy's still been effed. So I was uh, working on getting some of that up with uh, my cheeky, boring, for most people, cash register runs on Interchange. Where I just take a pistol, I creep around, and I just get all the cash registers in the mall. So was it cheeky or was it cheeky breaky? Cheeky mm, breaky. I don't think he was scav running. Because I, um, well, because I kind of fucked up a PMC. He didn't hear me come in and I heard him looting. So I hid from him knowing, okay, I just have a pistol. I have to be really careful about this. Dude runs right by me. I missed the first shot. He turned stairs right at me. Long enough for me just to put the red dot right on his face. Oh. Like he had tier four armor and everything, just single fucking bullet right to the face from a pistol. Took oh, him out. Man. He was guaranteed. He was mad. not a happy dude. Yeah, he was guaranteed oh, yeah. mad. But you got some good. You know what made it, it better? Right? Did you survive? I survived. It wasn't great. I mean, the armor was nice, but other than that, he had two gas analyzers found in raid. Oh, he was no doubt doing that found in raid thing, and I fucked him over on it. Felt so good what? to know that I ruined someone's day. <laughs> That's so rude. I mean, dude, there, there is some satisfaction to knowing you just fucked up someone's quest. Yeah. There is a little In a bit. really and, weird way. And, you no know, wonder we've been getting destroyed in Dota. Probably if. Revenge. It, I mean, it, it gives them Tarkov. Tarkov giveth and Tarkov taketh away. You know, three weeks ago, Urk was probably trying to get some gas analyzers out of the raid and somebody just domed him. So. You know, well, let's not talk about take <laughs> today. Talk me tomorrow. You my entire economy. <laughs> I'm still on the, that bitch needs to be giveth here soon because yeah. I'm still in the negative. <laughs> I think, uh, well, I, I think I have maybe some strategies for you that don't involve cash registers that might make your economy move up a little quicker, but I enjoy those. I like There's part of me that likes stealth. I, I do like, like I a chill love the old splinter cell. You need to play some night raids then. Yes, they're kind of hit takes... and miss because every once in a while you get like the super sweaty try hard team at night with like thermals and stuff. But a lot of the times it's also just really chill and it, it creates a it's it's really immersive and, and fun. My only concern is it's not cheap. Grant, it may not be as expensive as it was, but it's still not cheap to do night runs. You might spend an extra 50K. I started today with less than that. Oh my god, so, Eric. My economy you need to my play some scav gone. runs. It is fucking gone, dude. We need to play some duos and I'll just like help you loot and try to keep you alive and feed me. <laughs> like literally the last time that me and you grinded out just destroyed my economy. So yeah. Oh my god. I will give you a Bitcoin once I get my next one. Okay. <laughs> That'll help. Anyway, um, yeah, Tarkov's been good, though. It's been a fun time. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a lot of Dota. I think yeah, that's I that. been clear from the last few weeks. Yeah. But um, I actually went a little next level. Um, I did watch some videos on Gamer Class. I had access to an account, so I watched some videos of like pros breaking down how to play certain positions in certain ways. Like For one position in Dota, this one pro has like six hour video. Well, it's broken into different sections and stuff, but six hours worth of videos for just playing the position I play. So I've been going through actually studying, trying to figure out how to play it better, what to do, how to do it. I like, this is to the point where I don't even know that I tried this much at Rocket League. <laughs> I don't, I don't so, know any Dota teams, but you're going to be on one of them in no time. No, <laughs> like, okay. So here, here's the difference here. So rocket league, um, we know a lot of people that are really high end, like there's an actual, it's stupid. Like I have thousands over a thousand hours in that game and I'm still probably like bottom 5% rank. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we are not good. We are decidedly like, bad. This is amateur hour. The, uh, I don't know how to say it in a way that, really properly does it 
I feel but like Rocket League like, has a lower skill ceiling than Dota. It's just based on the time. Dota or Rocket League is all mechanical as well. For Dota, there's a lot of other intricacies. Yeah. Like, Dota's like, you a don't have, complex game, I feel. You don't have the mechanical mastery. So that part's like, you can't just go to free play and learn how to play Dota. That doesn't work. Yeah, but you there can't go into free play you, and learn how to rotate either. Yes, but you can go into free play and learn how to properly flick, how to dribble. Like, there is nothing outside of last hit that you can learn to do in Dota without playing a game. Okay. Yeah. And, like, bots don't work. Like, the bots don't teach you shit. And, like, you won't only, you'll only build this one item if you're in this one type of situation, potentially. So, like, there's a lot of situational shit about Dota, which makes it super complex. I, there's there's a reason why the game hasn't really fundamentally changed since the original Warcraft 3 custom map, right? Like, Dota has been Dota for for its entire lifetime, and the game is still evolving. And it's not just, like, meta changes and, and stuff like that. Like, there are fundamental changes. Like, even back when I first started playing Dota 2 in the early beta... The game is played entirely differently now. It's played entirely different, like now compared to two months ago. Yeah, and like, but uh, at the same time, it has remained basically the same. It's just people keep finding new ways to to improve their play. Well, and they keep introducing shit. But yeah, but I think also part of it there's like 113 heroes. Yeah, kind of a mono map at once. There's always going to be unique shit. Where I feel with Rocket League, it's a bunch of situations that you learn from and know what to do in a situation. Mm. In Dota, you typically put in situations you've never been in. It's relatively static, whereas Dota has enough variables that you can't you can't rely on the static learnings. Like you can learn to recognize, okay, this is similar to this other situation where I encountered this particular problem and I think I can do this thing, but there's enough variables that it's rarely going to match up. Uh, but anyway, been playing that. i um, actually been getting win rate back up, which is nice. So yeah, just doing more of that. Starting to transition to play more core heroes, which is fun. I typically have only supported. Now I'm trying to every once in a while mix in some cores. Just, so that's just a whole different case. ballgame. Just in case you're not familiar with Dota, for, for those in the audience, also Adam. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Dota, there's uh, typically two positions on how it breaks down. You're either a core or carry or your support. If you're a core, your job is to get beefy and, and buffed up. You know, get your levels, get your experience, get your abilities, get a bunch of items. Don't and skip go and just just go yeah. wreck shit, right? Your your job is not to help out your team. You're there to just destroy things. Your team uh, plays around you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. If you're a support, your job is to keep those people alive, right? Get them stunned so they can get kills. Uh, you know, uh, set up set up camps so they can kill those and get more gold and XP. Um, use abilities to either keep them alive, heal them, give them more mana, basically keep them around the action so they can grow faster and faster. Your job as a support is to do the shit work. If you're an Always Sunny fan, being support is like being Charlie at the Charlie. Bar. You got to do the Charlie work. Everybody else is off having a good time. You're scrubbing urinals. That's your job. If it's going to cost you money, you're going to net out nothing and it's just going to be boring. It's support work or it's mm -hmm. Charlie work. Yeah. But yeah, so that's about it for me, though. I'm just trying to change it up, do a little more of those. And I've, yeah, that's all I got for that. Tom, you got a few more games. I do. So I've got a, a collection of, um, of VR stuff. But first, I wanted to say we played some Tower Unite the other night. Um, if you have not played or bought Tower Unite, uh, it is one of the best times you can have with a super, super janky game. Not like a Cyberpunk 2077 kind of jank way. Um, you can tell that the management in Tower Unite actually gives a shit about what they put out. It's just kind of rough around the edges because they do a whole lot in one tiny package. Um, so they've got a Mario Kart mode. They just added some uh, 
uh, a, a new map. It's it's a bunch of fun. It's it's broke as fuck. Like the game is janky, uh, but it's all I, I don't want to say it's broke as fuck. Like certain parts are a little rougher than others, but like the Mario Kart stuff, that shit's fun and it's oh, yeah. pretty good. Like I don't think there's much jank to that. There is a little bit. Like I have fallen through the map um, a decent amount, but it's also when I have been like hit with weird, stupid items in places that the game doesn't expect me to be. Um, Josh ran into an issue where we actually couldn't hit him with items. Instead of, like, like a red shell in Mario Kart, which would make you spin out in Tara Unite, um, it just collided with him. So it would physically push him around the map, which sounds like it would be an advantage for Josh. It was not, because instead of just, you know, losing a little bit of time, a little bit of speed after getting hit with a shell... Nah, he got kicked off of the map after something hit him, which was oh. broke as fuck and also hilarious. So, Yeet. yeah, yeet indeed. Uh, so yeah, Tower Unite is always a good time. Um, so on the VR front, uh, I played a a little bit of a VR chat with Magic Dave, but it didn't get oh. nuts. Don't <laughs> worry. We actually, it was just Dave and I. He was showing me a... Uh, a new map that's actually uh, open source. Uh, it is a full game of pool, but oh, it's, that's not, cool. it's not as janky as you would expect pool to be. Like you can actually hit a button to lock in your angle. And the only VR ish component they have to be really careful with is how much oomph you put into your strike. So you can line it up. You've got two hands to, to kind of position your, your pool cue it works really well. And the whole thing is completely automated, including all the rules. So if you want to play actual game of billiards inside of uh, VR chat, it works really, really well. It works way better than, than it ever should. Um, the map is still pretty early. Like uh, it's set in a, a, what looks like a nice looking apartment in a small town, but everything is dev textures. So other than the pool table, everything is going to be like gray checkerboarded textures everywhere. Uh, but it's a good time. Hmm. Um, yeah, VR chat's something I typically don't do much with. I I respect VR chat for the uh, the glorious trash fire that it is. <laughs> it makes me think of chat roulette, but I mean I know it's different. But I mean the same kind of inter- the same kind of pull for one I see for the other. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, weird. And that's um, right. I referenced chat roulette. What's it? Yeah, two? you did. Uh, I also played a little bit of Phasmophobia, um, and that is fantastic. So they just made some updates to the beta channel. Ghosts can now actually hear you during hunts, which apparently was not the case before. Yeah. Um, so I... if you're talking, the ghost is going to move towards your position. So I remember we made a clip out of the podcast to put on our YouTube talking about the phasmophobia voice recognition stuff. And we said that, you know, during if the ghost is hunting you and you make noise, it's going to find you and kill you. And then we got a comment on that video saying, hey, um, this is actually misinformation. The ghost can't hear you during the hunts. But now the game has been updated that the ghost can hear you during hunts. So, yep. Now our inaccurate we video is accurate. Without also, he wasn't to that it. nice. He, he, he wasn't, wasn't that nice. It's a YouTube comment, so. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the ghost can now hear you during hunts, and more importantly, when the ghost goes from room to room to check them, it throws open doors, or it can throw open doors. Ooh. So we had we had an upstairs ghost in the prison. I went downstairs to hide. I was like, yeah, whatever. It's not going to come down here. It doesn't roam that far. Um, so I'm sitting there just kind of chill because, you know, it's Phasmo. We've got, you know, 60-ish hours apiece in this game. We've been hunted a lot. That game's not really scary anymore. Um, I'm sitting in that room just kind of chilling. And then the door, wham, opens up. And I start getting the heartbeat and hearing the ghost. Oh. And I hear the footsteps coming closer. I'm like... Oh God, oh God, oh God. And like, I, I'm in VR, right? And my flashlight is literally trembling, my flashlight hand. I'm like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> and it walks away. Oh. Oh, fuck. So yeah, the ghost can now throw open doors. 
Phasmophobia scared the shit out of me again. Uh, 10 out of 10. Absolutely fantastic game. If you do not have Phasmophobia, especially if you've got VR, uh, get on that shit right now. I, I think... wish I could wipe my mind and rediscover that game now. I know. Yeah, yeah. same. We, we binged it too much that one week. Um, but... I think that's a really important part of any horror game to keep the the player on edge is you can't know ev- you can't ever know that you're safe. Yeah. With exceptions yeah. because there's there's a very useful mechanic of the safe room like like yeah. Resident Evil does with the save rooms. It's always safe and that's kind of you know your reprieve from the world. Until but when you're in that world yeah. trying to get there. But while you're in the world you I mean you can't know that you're safe. And that's where that tension Phas- comes from. And Phasmo has that. And mm-hmm. then it builds a threshold because of it. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you know how the systems work, you're no longer afraid of them. Much like in most horror games, you know, once you die enough times, it's no longer scary. And it's yeah. just another, okay, I got to watch this animation again. So, yeah, yeah it, it scared the shit out of me. And what's great is that during hunts, you will now hear doors just... We, we ruined that. <laughs> that, was, that was my fault. <laughs> um, during hunts, you will now hear doors open and close. It will just start slamming shit everywhere. Oh, nice. In the prison, I noticed, because um, I, I didn't ever see uh, musical instruments around. During one of the hunts, fucking music started playing, <laughs> like, behind us. Like, creepy fucking mandolin music. And we're just, like, looking around, we're like, uh... Do you guys have Spotify up? No, my my Spotify is closed. Why? Is, is yours up? No, no, Tom. My Spotify is closed too. Like, okay, let's go back to the truck. Um, <laughs> yeah, Fazbo. It's great. Is it playing the Silent Hill theme song? God, it was. I don't even know what it was. But it was like, like, because it started quiet, and it was just like something that you were almost subconsciously aware of until you could really hear it, and you're like, oh no, I'm not just imagining that. That's a thing. Okay, this is weird. Um, That's cool. I also got in some Pavlov VR, which just had a massive update, uh, which is very, very well received. It's fantastic. Um, they just added a shit ton of World War II weaponry and maps and vehicles. They now have a co-op tank mode where it takes three people to operate a tank. One person in the side gunner slot, one person driving the tank, and the other person manning the gun. And it's not like, oh, I'm going to hit, sit here and push a button. To fire the, t- the main gun of the tank, you have to open the breach. You have to grab a shell from next to you. You have to put it in, close the breach, accidentally save a shot in Rocket League, just like that. Then use two crank handles to rotate and get your angle of attack, and then hit a button on the dash to fire. Like, it's a whole thing. And driving cool. is is equally as involved. Um, it is fantastic. The only issue I have is my fucking teammates. I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> I'm sitting in the tank. I'm like, come on, guys, let's go. I'm driving. And, and nobody shows up. Or if they do show up, they're just like, I can't figure out the gun. I'm like trying to teach them. I'm like, no, that's too much effort. I'm just going to shoot guys. And so everybody lines up and gets shot by the enemy tank because three people decided, oh, no, we're actually going to work together. But my idiot team just ran into the line of fire all day fucking long. That all sucks. day long. There, there's no guy better guy. feeling than in a game like that where you can work together with your team to do something you couldn't have done solo. And yeah. then on the other side of that, there's nothing more frustrating than having the opportunity to do that and nobody else wants to cooperate. Welcome yes. to Urkanized Life in Dota. Mm. Um, so, uh, the other thing that they did is they added a, uh, kind of a battlefield mode. So you've got a bunch of points and it's defenders versus attackers. And you gotta go march through various historical World War II-esque locations and either defend and attack. Um, it's a shit ton of fun because you get a bunch of different classes. So Dave was a sniper. I was a medic. He'd take a round. I'd patch him up. He's over there headshotting kids left and right. It was amazing. Uh, and then, of course, there's people in the uh, like anti-tank and support roles with big-ass uh, rocket launchers with limited ammo. 
it is a shit ton of fun. Um, so if you weren't interested in Pavlov because it was just Counter-Strike and you wanted kind of a more Battlefield-esque experience, uh, yeah, check out Pavlov again because they now have it and it's great. All the great gunplay, all the great custom weaponry, all the great custom maps, all of it in the same package. So I'm going to play some of that tonight for sure. I was actually just about to call out. This Is this official, Pavlov? 100% official. Nice. So they're officially saying, you know what? We've done the CS stuff enough. Let's, let's start doing some other. Yeah. Let's just be yeah. the go-to all-purpose shooter. VR shooter. I mean, the, and it makes sense. Like, their shooting mechanics are second to none for VR shooters. With the exception... Okay, their shooting mechanics are second to none in multiplayer VR shooters, right? Half-Life Alex still feels the best out of any VR game I've ever played, but it's Valve, so of course it does. Um... So, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, actually, Dave Smiggle and I got into a big-ass uh, battlefield map with a mix of modern and World War II weaponry, and we were just charging. It was great. We all <laughs> gathered inside the weapon tent. We all picked our loadouts, and some random decided, he said, hey, guys, hold back. I'll let you know when to go. And we're like, okay, I guess this guy wants to play commander. And then he starts playing Fortunate Son over his in-game mic. <laughs> it was <That's> beautiful. <laughs> it was good. We all charged. Most of us died. But we had a great time. It was just fantastic. I loved it. So randoms really piss you off a lot. But man, sometimes they can provide a moment that's just <laughs> nuts. I, I will say, like, that, that pissed off moment only happened once. Every other time I've gotten randoms in, in Pavlov, it's always just chill and fun. Because it turns out that uh, like annoying kids and trolls don't want to get banned after spending a thousand bucks on VR hardware. Fair. Yeah, yeah but the Quest 2 is out, and that's pretty cheap. The Quest 2 is out. But in general, the idea is like, if there's if one place to go down, play a shooter yeah. on, P on um, VR... So you probably want to make sure you can always play it. Yeah. And of uh, course, there's always custom servers. Uh, Dave and I were playing a zombies map uh, set in Walmart. And this is actually really weird. So 20 years ago, I played a custom Counter-Strike 1.6 map called Walmart. <laughs> and it had like somebody went through and they took pictures of the shelves in Walmart and set it up so you could call out things like we got two terrorists in the underwear aisle. I repeat, <laughs> two elite units in the panty section. Um, Dave said, Tom, there's this Walmart map. It's great. And I get in there. I'm like, this looks really familiar. Oh, my God. I literally played a map in VR that I had played like a mere handful of times 20 fucking years ago. Oh my God. Nice. It was beautiful. It was kind of a religious experience. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pavlov, if you if you have VR, you owe it to yourself to get Pavlov uh, or to at least play it. It's just goddamn wonderful. Uh, well, Adam, uh, yeah. you actually got a new game on the docket this week. Yeah, it's. I mean, it was just a demo. Um, it's a really short demo, but I played the demo for Little Nightmares 2. Um, I'm really excited for Little Nightmares 2. I loved the first one. Um, if you've never seen or played it, um, it's it's kind of like... The gameplay is pretty similar to Inside, and it's got the a pretty similar um, like animation, art style, camera angle, you know, puzzle stealth gameplay. Um, but it, it's spooky. It's spookier than than Inside is probably, and it's a little more. I don't know how to describe it. It has a. I don't want to say. Humor is not the right word, but it's it's got a more childlike sort of charm to it, while also still being creepy and disturbing. So you play as a child but you're like smaller than most children should be in this giant world. So like you're climbing, like jumping up onto chairs to climb up them and to, to use the environment to get around. And all of the enemies are like these grotesque, like demonic Adult. Tim Burton-esque versions of grotesque humans with like 
way too long arms or like disgusting mashed up faces or something. Uh, but but it's a really cool, I don't know, the game was really good, so I'm looking forward to the second one. And the demo seems to be kind of more of the same in a good way. It's visually nicer. The gameplay is very familiar, but they did change it up a little bit in that you have a little companion and you can do, um, you have to use them to solve puzzles. Like, hey, you um, you hold this thing while I go over here so that we can both, you know, get through this room or whatever. So I'm hoping that makes the puzzles a little more interesting too and changes it up enough to where it still feels familiar like a good sequel, but not stale and just the same thing again. Yeah. I've, I've got a question for that. Do you yeah. think the, the addition of the companion is going to lessen the the creepiness or horror aspect? Because I know uh, even in like Resident Evil 4, right? Just the fact that Ashley was around in parts of that game made it a little bit less spooky because hey at least you're not alone you're gonna yeah. you're gonna die but you're gonna die together uh maybe i mean little nightmares isn't a you know terrify you to death kind of game Ooh. it's definitely a spooky atmosphere and, and there's there's definitely some sparks where you're like oh. but I, I don't know Ooh. i don't think it's that type of horror where you feel okay. like alone and desperate. Okay. But also, I didn't play Resident Evil Four, so I don't know what you're talking about with with that character. But oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I never had interest. You didn't in play four. shooter versions. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I know it's really highly regarded, but I just have no interest in playing it. Honestly. Fair enough. That's I know, that's one I, of my I'm, one of my favorite Resident Evils, I'm, and it does maintain the scariness. Yeah, I mean, I will say if they do the the, I know they're doing a remake of it, like they did the first two, right, or two and three. So I'll probably play that, but I know that the the original is just like old and dated and janky enough that I probably wouldn't enjoy it. Resident Evil Four basically modernized and uh, and kicked off the quick time event craze. Oh. Remember when every single fucking game had quick time events? Remember and when the entire game punk. was quick time events? Heavy rain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they actually pioneered it, and it was oh. really well regarded at the time until yeah. the gaming community does what the gaming community does and yeah. beat that feature into the fucking ground. Yeah. Well, because they made a game. What was the fucking game? It was Xbox era. It was before they made Heavy Rain. Um, Fahrenheit fucking, or uh, it was I Fahrenheit it. everywhere else. Indigo Prophecy. Indigo Prophecy. That's what I was thinking. Because yeah. there was some non-quick elements to it, but they were just like sneak around in the dark, be a sneaky boy, and now press buttons because something demons charging you. Yeah. I Never. I could not play those. Like I I mm. tried. I really wanted to like Heavy Rain, but it was the most stupid fucking <laughs> Sean bullshit. <laughs> Jason of all Jason. time. It did yeah, give us X to it Jason. Was though, which I, I like I like the aspects of it, but I never X played to Heavy Jason Rain. It's the best. You I like to You have to play the first hour to press X to Jason, and you have the best part of that game. That was the same but, company that did uh, Detroit, right? Yeah. Yep. Which was also panned for being fucking shitty. Some people liked it, but I guess it's got its little niche or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you uh, going back to Resident Evil 4, there was something... I guess the reason it didn't appeal to me as much as maybe some of the other ones is I think that's kind of... Isn't that game kind of the turning point into more action-focused, less horror-focused game? Um, yes, but whereas five was cheesy action movie and six was even cheesier action movie, mm -hmm. four was legitimately terrifying at moments. Okay. And that's why I said that the save rooms from Resident Evil aren't always safe because Resident Evil four gave you the entire game, the entire game. You walk into your room, you get that save music. All right, I can breathe now. Except there was one where you walk into your room, you get that save music, you save your game. And then the door explodes and one of these <laughs> unkillable creatures starts oh running at you really like creepy and Silent Hill-esque. Like it was Jesus. It destroyed the sanctity of the save room just to freak you out. And <laughs> God damn, did it work. That game was terrifying at most. 
Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And also, and it, that was the first or only one where it actually wasn't zombies. Uh, wasn't that one? It was I mean, definitely less like classic zombie, right? Though. They were kind yeah. of like a cult thing that also I'm sure they were infected or so, whatever. Yeah. So it it looked like they were just a cult um, until it turns out that, yeah, there is a virus. And it's not really zombies per se. They're undead, but it's kind of more of that Last of Us style mushroom infected takeover body sort of thing. Yeah. But um, actually, kind of. The did you see any of the reveal trailers and stuff for Resident Evil Eight Village? Uh, I think the first one, but I haven't kept up with it. Okay, they did a little um, their little their version of Nintendo Direct kind of thing for it. I think it was a couple days ago, something like that. And they showed a couple more trailers, and they revealed that there is a demo out on PS4. Kind of like they did with Resident Evil 7, a standalone demo that isn't like strictly part of the game, but is, you know, within the game world. Yeah. So hopefully that's really cool. And that's going to be coming to PC at some point um, later on. And I like that kind of shit. Yeah. Mm. Hats yeah, the off one for, Capcom for that. Yeah. Yeah. The one for RE7 was really cool. Um, but Well, didn't they have like a VR one for RE7 where like you were tied to a chair or some shit like that? That was a DLC for. I think there was a DLC that was something okay. like that. I remember they had a uh, they had a demo for Resident Evil 2. And, like, I've bought enough of the, you know, redone Resident Evils, right? Like, I bought almost every single one in the GameCube. And it was just, here's the same game with a prettier skin. I mm-hmm. wasn't going to buy Resident Evil 2. I wasn't going to buy the remake. Like, it, it looked nice, but why would I buy this again? I never actually finished the first time I bought new resident evil 2 right until i played that demo and i realized holy fuck i'm gonna get sucked into this yeah. and i i instant bought that well that one was especially so, well i mean both of them were especially important because they were such big departures for the the kind of resident yeah. evil formula so you say you didn't want to buy it again tom how many times have you bought super mario uh only a handful I mean, like, okay, so Super Mario is probably the wrong thing. How many times have I bought Ocarina of Time? Every single fucking time I can. Every single right. time. If Nintendo said, hey, we're releasing Ocarina of Time for the Commodore 64 and it's only $700, I would buy three copies today. <laughs> nah. I'm I know who I am. <laughs> Embrace it. All right. But yeah, the, um, um... Go ahead. Sorry, the um the Resident Evil Eight Village stuff. It it looks pretty cool. It's it, it's definitely different. It's not. It doesn't seem like your traditional zombie thing. It gave me kind of Resident Evil Four vibes a little bit. Okay. Um, and the village kind of gave me a little bit of some Bloodborne like sort of vibes to it. Ooh. There's, I, I saw footage of like a werewolf dude, and there's this lady that's like really classy, but she's like a giant like she's really really tall and a, cu- a couple other people in this mansion that like turn into a swarm of bugs kind of like that lady in resident evil 7 i don't know it's kind of, it gets it's getting kind of out there but thematically still kind of seems like it would be a little cohesive i don't know I mean, it, it's interesting it looks like it looks like a departure but also you know familiar in its ways too are they keeping it first person like yeah. seven how much more out there can they get? Because having a middle-aged woman with a, a hornet's nest for a crotch was pretty <laughs> out there. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Resident Evil's always had those like kind of weird over the top. Usually towards the end of the games, like <laughs> they start off pretty grounded. And then towards yeah. the end, you have like a rocket launcher and there's a giant alligator and yep. that kind yep. of stuff. Um, that's, the, I mean, that's the part of Resident Evil I don't particularly care for. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering how much of this game is going to be that kind of stuff, but it does look pretty cool and it looks different and unique. So I'm looking I forward to checking it out. That's why I always liked Silent Hill. It's because Resident Evil does let you embrace that power fantasy, right? Like you've been scared the whole game. Here's the last 20% where we're just going to let you take out all of your aggression mm-hmm. on everything. Go have fun. 
And Silent yeah. Hill ends with, hey, um, remember that psychological horror? Let's double the fuck down on that. You ain't sleeping yeah. tonight. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. That's why I, I thought Resident Evil 7, like the first half was one of my favorite horror games of all time. And then the last half, I was just like, eh, it's okay. Yeah. I remember the demo to seven was super fucking suspenseful for me. You should like there was a moment. I never played it. I uh, just did the demo, and I know that there was moments of that though, where because it was first person, it was a different feel. Where it's like I know where I need to go. I am dreading opening this fucking door (laughs) because I don't want to have happen what's probably going to have happen, and then it didn't happen. Yeah, it was misplaced, and then they get you once the guards down because they're fucking good at what they do. classic horror formula um so i think that's did i did we miss anything i think Uh, uh, the release date for resident evil i was getting to that it's may Uh, something may 7th so um i had one thing that i didn't write down if any of you are into marvel stuff and you've all caught up on like endgame and the whole mcu um I recently, uh, this week, started watching WandaVision, which is out on Disney+. And they're doing that Mandalorian thing where they release one episode a week. Um, It is unsettling and like a almost Twilight Zone, Twin Peaks-y kind of way. It is fucking great. Um, It's got like a real slow burn feel to it. It is just fucking weird and excellent and unsettling and yeah i i love it i marvel has been gone for like a year and a half they took a well well well-deserved break after concluding the uh the phase one of the mcu but god damn they are back and they are back big and it's not explosiony superhero things like (laughs) this is kind of disturbing like kind of this haha nervous laughter sort of energy to all of WandaVision that I cannot get enough of. Holy shit. Uh, so yeah, um, check it out if you haven't, uh, because I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. Just understand that you're not going to get like Avengers level of action. Like this is one of the, the slower Marvel set up like a sitcom or something, isn't it? Kind of. Personally. I can't. I can't really say a whole lot without spoiling it's kind it. Kind of Truman uh, Show ish. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's something that's just kind of not right. Kind of fucky about everything <laughs> that's going on, and it it very slowly leans into that more and more and more. Uh, mm. So I can really recommend it. I'm loving it so far. Renee got really burnt out on all the Marvel shit. Her and I are on the edge of our seat. Like, this is a TV show. We do not talk to each other while watching because we literally had to rewind because we thought something broke. And we're like, wait, did what happened? Did that? No, okay, it wasn't just us. What the fuck? What the unholy <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Nice. I will have to probably give that a go. There are only um, three I... episodes you can get through it pretty quick. I will wait until they're all done. <laughs> That's but what I, I thought. <laughs> I like the I like what they were doing with MCU. I like that they're starting to do something similar to that to Star Wars. My only concern is at some point, if they drop quality, it becomes a fucking sat just saturates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's my entire worry with the MCU stuff. Because I enjoy the MCU stuff, but at the same time, like if you keep punching me in the face with it. You either have to start up in the bar or I'm going to stop caring. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Or you need to like what it sounds like with WandaVision where you just change it up. You don't go for what you've been doing. You do something different. Yeah. So. That's, that's why I'm really happy that they took the year and a half break that they did. I mean, let's, let's be real. The reason they took such an extended break is because of COVID. Uh, that said, yeah, it looks like they put in the work here. And I, I gotta say, I don't recommend waiting for it all to come out and binging it straight. I think the slow burn and the slow release schedule is really working in this uh, this show's favor. Because if you got it all in one go, it's going to lose a lot of that a lot of that creepy charm that you get by waiting. It's supposed to be a slow burn. You're not supposed to just slam it all in your face all at once, sir. You got to take your time. You're supposed to think about what you saw for a week. Yeah. 
Nah, and dog. I don't. My God, that. I'm gonna think about what I saw for a week. <laughs> nope. Because I want it now. I'm not that way about a lot of things, but when it comes to my TV show, man, just I want it all right now. <laughs> and I, I understand that there are some downsides to that. Like I watched yeah. like the first four or five ep- or seasons of um, Game of Thrones within like two weeks. And, and I didn't one. remember <laughs> anyone's fucking names. Oh, oh, okay. because I watched it so quick. I see their face. I know who they are. I know what they've done. But I couldn't articulate any of this externally because I didn't know their fucking names. <laughs> And, uh, and so, well, yeah. I mean, you don't need to know one person's name. Like, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I've seen, like, maybe four episodes. I know what's his name, the blonde fucking kid. Fuck him, because he's a little bitch. Joffrey. That's all you gotta know. Yeah, that's all you gotta yeah, know. He's a little bitch. He's maybe my most hated character of anything ever. <laughs> they did a really good job <laughs> of making everyone hate him. And they do a really good thing where, like, they even have, like, moments where you think it might be, like, him becoming, okay, maybe he's growing. And then they double down like, nope, nope. nope. (laughs) He's actually worse than you thought he was. I like our expectations for you were low, but holy fuck, Tom! I'm surprised you didn't watch Game of Thrones. It seems like you'd like that. I was, I was going to, and I, I started trendy. And then no, no, I was really going to because it, like, man, I got like hardcore into Lord of the Rings back in the day. Like, this is up my fucking alley. Mm -hmm. Um, But then. Right when I was about to get into it and I was like setting up to watch everything, season eight started getting reviews. Like the first three episodes oh. of season eight came out. And then I thought, I don't, why, why would I put myself through this? Why would I get attached to this show that's just going to be one of the worst things in the world when I get to the part that really matters about it? So I decided not to watch it. Uh, okay, the ending no, wasn't great, I think it's, it's over-exaggerated. I, I, uh, feel. I really didn't like the ending, but it didn't make the early seasons any less good like I most of the that. show is excellent until you get, get to the very last season or maybe the season before that it starts to get a little less good and then the last season there's some things where you just have to be like all right that doesn't make any sense but we're just gonna roll with it and they got a little bit of you have somehow to, he returned kind of elements towards oh, the end yeah or oh. like that character should not have like there's no universe in which that character would have made that decision in with that circumstance. But, Somehow Palpatine yeah. has returned. It's like, oh, you motherfuckers. So, you a, a, but aside Excellent. from a couple of things like that, I mean, th- it's still worth watching. I think it's one of the best series I've seen. Like it, it and, is, it is really, really good. And I think it helps too watching it after it's all already over and you know to expect like, hey. You're gonna you're gonna have to watch the last couple seasons because you're gonna want to know more. But going into it with tempered expectations, knowing that it wasn't you know critically received super well, um, <laughs> you can kind of you know ease ease the blow. But it's still yeah, it's absolutely awesome. worth watching the it's, first. It's... I mean, if you watch the first full season. You're gonna watch the second first, the second season, and then you're gonna watch the third season, and you're gonna watch the fourth season. It's real. It, honestly, it's really good. And also, keep in mind, if season eight's what's scaring you, season eight is like five percent of the entire show. Yeah. Yeah, I just I don't I don't know if I wanna if I wanna buckle up knowing that the last uh, the last five percent of my stake is gonna be just dog turd. I mean, you could always just stop watching after the end of season I, six. I know, man. Like, I, I well, no. absolutely get that uh, that sunk cost fallacy thing going. Like, okay, I watched all of Battlestar Galactica, and I hated it after the end of the first season. Like, second episode of the, the second season, I hated myself for watching it, but I had to finish the whole thing, and I suffered through all of it and it was it just got worse and worse and worse and i don't want to do that again i've been there so um what you could do is just get to the eighth season and then just read how it ends do you really think the book is ever going to come out no i don't mean the book i mean come on this dude's going to milk it for all he's got and he's going to have like (laughs) sub series going off here before he finishes yeah because from all i've heard about the books he has even more fucking storylines in the movies or the show which means he probably doesn't know how to fucking wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to make things complicated than make complicated things tidy up. 
But for another time, at least at least give it a shot. I think I think it'll be worth it for you. I don't even like like I'm not even into that fantasy setting that much at all, and the game the show didn't appeal to me at all. But I watched it anyway because it got so much you know hype or whatever. So I, I think, started watching I it and made. I got addicted to it and I watched it all in about a month or something. Less than that. If I can watch weeks. Breaking Bad, you can yeah. watch that. I don't understand that. Breaking Bad was perfect all the way through. Because I never watched it for a long time. I held off. I think I might do it after I get through all the Star Wars stuff that you keep demanding I watch. <laughs> it's too okay, much yeah. It, it takes precedence over the... Or <laughs> I think Star Wars takes precedence over that. I really do. Because yeah. that shit I'm telling you to watch ends really well, too. It's a beautiful bundle. I I finished Legend of Korra and I loathe myself for that. Like I <laughs> I know what I'm getting into. I know who I am. Yeah, well, in that case, man, that would have kept you into Clone Wars and you would have been satisfied. It was the complete opposite, where sunk cost gets you to continue and then it pays off. Yeah, no, no, that was early enough. I got two episodes in. I decided, okay, moral of the story, children's cartoon ain't for me, and I bounced. Apparently, yeah, one of those. Better. One of the first ones is that Yoda one, and it's oh, just not it was, that great. It was bad. Yeah, like but, it, it's fine for a kid show, but that's that's where it ends. No, no, man, that that shit's legit. There's there's a point when someone gets decapitated by an elevator. That's not no kid show. Um. Anyway, I think that's all the games we got. Yeah, unless I miss one. Or actually, Adam, did you want to bring up anything about Hades? You've been playing that a little more. Um, no, I only played a few more runs, and you know, it's you more it, of the same. Really excellent roguelike that does you know, some unique stuff that keeps things interesting and changing constantly, so that it never gets repetitive or boring. Uh, really, really, really good game. Um, have you had the um, different sister? I'll just say that. No. Okay. Did you listen to Twisted Sister? Uh, I'm not a big Trans fan Mister. of sis Twisted Sister. What about Corn? Mm, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> but I think that's all the games we got. So before we get to news, we have something else to do. And actually, uh, we should all leave match here because it's perfect fucking timing. Oh, yeah, that is a good time. Um, so uh, we're a little late this time, but we do have our monthly top play montage. So we had... All of December, people putting in clips. And thanks to Gift Your Game, we have clips from a lot of different stuff now. But everyone putting in their clips, and there was a lot of stuff to go through, so we whittled down to the top 10. And uh, what Adam's about to show you yeah. is our top 10 clips of December. Hit that play button, brother man. Here we go. First one up, Acro. And as you see, not Rocket League. This is Slapshot Rebound. Oh. Also, shout out to Just, Jacob for making that shot after the save pass thing. Yeah. Really Acro barely makes the save. And Jacob from like fucking half ice, center ice. <laughs> Bailey. Then we got yeah. Bailey. The NRG uh, Dom. It looks pretty nice. It does, yeah. Oh my yeah, god, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, seeing into the future. If you're an asshole, this is when you spam great pass. Oh my god. <laughs> he was ready for that before the other guy even thought of it. Cap on. A regular on these. Yeah, he is. Ooh. Defense. Good challenge. Good. To oh. the backboard. To the down. Was that Very to the well done. wall? Uh, it was to yeah. the uh, sweat drip down that ball. <laughs> uh, the town okay. boogie. Town, town boogie. Let's go boogie. Oh, the ball. okay. Oh my God. Really good control yeah. there. Making two guys look bad. Sticking with Damn. it. Oh. We got John Rar with the Batmobile. Okay. All day. All day with that Batmobile. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, oh there we go. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that ceiling shot. And those types of shots look so cool in the Batmobile. Yes. There's just something about it. It looks cool when it's flipping around in the air. The fucking plank. <laughs> Beautiful. Holy! 
ほいいざへっ Backboard. His movement is so clean. Look at this first aerial and how he just immediately gets the angle right and has to just stay there. Like, that is just really, really clean. Not a lot of unnecessary movement. Yes. It's almost Tie. perfectly played. Misses the first go. Catches on the bounce. Oh, the reset. Oh my God. He the... wasn't ready for the reset. <laughs> I love how it scoops the ball up. I love scoops, like, even on just regular flips. But that was just perfect top right corner. No one's getting that shit. Threes. 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 New submission. New submitter. Get a little control. Get a little, little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> little breathy in here. That is, it's just dirty. Oh, that Fucking is really dirty. <laughs> hey, Slugger. We got Slugger because Spike Rush was a mode for a little bit in December. The I past. The catch. Oh, the catch. And I believe that's Red Rebel Rob, too, making the shot. So oh shout out to him God. as well for being a part of the play. What a pass. That what pass. a fucking pass. What a fucking catch. <laughs> KX. KX again with the number one spot two months in a row. Look at that. All right, this is just dirt nasty. Oh, my God. Oh, what hell? Reset <laughs> to the backboard for the double. All right, KX, that's illegal. That's illegal. You can't do that to people. That's a war crime, buddy. <laughs> We're going to have to have a talk after okay? Uh, dirt nasty. Man, dirt that's dirt nasty. nasty. So, if you would like to be a part of this next montage for January, you still have, like, what, seven days to submit. So go into our Discord, drop your gifts into plays of the day, and just have at it. Yes, most of those are Rocket League. Yes, most of our players play Rocket League. But... Everything is welcome, and we appreciate things other than Rocket League. Keep pointing, Tom. Drive that Make home. Sure. You save your gifts and gift your game. You got to click that check mark, or they go away in a week. If they go away, we can't feature them because they get deleted. So hit that check mark when you submit. We'll all be okay. A lot of you aren't doing that still. Please do that. We desperately need you to. <laughs> we need this free content that you keep providing us, so please help us. It's the only thing I have left to live for. All that said, <laughs> um, how about some news, fellas? News. I guess we got news. Um, yeah. So what's first up on the docket? IO Interactive looking yeah. for a solution with Epic for Hitman 1 and 2 import. Yep. Uh, so we talked a little bit about this uh, last week because Hitman 3 is going to be an Epic Games exclusive for a while, it looks like. Um, a lot of people own Hitman 1 and 2 on Steam. I'm one of those people. I don't want to have to rebuy two of the previous games to just play through all the content in game three. Like, that kind of sucks. Um, so they did say, IO said, yeah, we're uh, we're going to look for a solution. Uh, it turns out, yeah, they found a solution. Um they do guarantee that before launch, they will have a solution for people to get their Hitman 1 and 2 content into Hitman 3 without needing to purchase anything else. But in case you wanted to pre-purchase Hitman 3 on Epic um, and you don't already have Hitman 1, they're giving you the Hitman 1 Game of the Year edition for free upon pre-order. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, I'm looking forward to the solution because, yeah, I'm going to get Hitman 3 on launch. Let's be real. Like, unless, unless it gets hit with, like, cyberpunk levels of fuckiness, I'm going to be playing or buying and playing through Hitman 3 and all the previous content again because I fucking love that game. Well, and that's a game you could feel safe pre-ordering as well because, like, if you know you're going to play it, you're going to fucking play it. You're going to own it. I mean, it depends. It depends. Like, I, I am really afraid to pre-order anything because... I saw really good reviews from Cyberpunk early on, and it turns out that they did some really shady, unethical shit with reviews. And uh, yeah, I, I bought a game that wasn't finished. Again. Well, let's be honest. Because of them, review companies are going to start asking for, okay, that's great. You gave us the uh, PC edition that we have a super beefed up computer for. Give us the Xbox edition now, too. It even goes beyond mm. that. Like CD Projekt Red even told these reviewers, you cannot use, if you're if you are publishing it, before the embargo date, you cannot use your own footage of the game. You have to use our pre-recorded footage in your reviews. So reviewers couldn't even show you the game as it really was 
they had to use the cleaned up footage that CDPR gave them. Oh, so that part of that also part of that is also the um story potential stuff too. So I, I kind of could see it. They could still fucked. they could still say this game runs awful. They could give warnings without showing it. They they could just say, hey, uh reviewers, could you, you know, stay away from telling people that you brutally murdered your mother in one of the cutscenes? And that you, okay. you tossed around, you played soccer with your decapitated father's head after you punched True. babies. Like, yeah, I mean, I, as soon as I said that, I realized like there's typically embargoes around certain content to story anyway. Yeah. So, anyway, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, they were looking to find the issue and they think they found the issue. Good. Yeah. Um, more news. Um, you wrote it as Blizzard eats um, Vicarious Vision. Um, it's also just in general, Activision is slowly and slowly taking up more and more Blizzard. Uh, one of the old Blizzard studios that's been working on remakes has officially been dissolved. And they were initially going to be doing the um, Bl or the Diablo 2 remake. So now that is going, if I believe, if I remember right, to an Activision team now. Um, no, so, it's going to Vicarious. That team that got dissolved has been replaced with Vicarious Visions. Who okay. most recently built the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remakes. Uh, this company is just known for their quality remakes. Frankly, so, honestly, like I'm I'm happy the devs are getting some money, right? They they did get bought. They they deserve all the success in the world. I feel like we lost something by them getting bought by Activision. It's kind of sad. I was hoping they'd stay independent, but uh Hey, this might mean we get really nice Diablo 1 and 2 remakes. So, uh, congrats. It's still kind of bittersweet to me, though. Eh, it happens. It's just the part that's kind of sad, though, is Activision slowly taking more and more control in the Blizzard day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's because... be real. Blizzard hasn't been Blizzard for years at this point. I mean, their WoW stuff has typically still been pretty solid. Uh, the Warcraft 3 remake was complete dog shit. Yep. So, I mean, it's just, it's more and more. They're stopping. I mean, at some point, they start touching into WoW is when Blizzard's effectively gone and it's no longer yeah. Blizzard. But it is what it is. And that's what it is. Wow. That was so fucking redundant. I'm sorry. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. It's already it like is. semantically the most useless sentence that exists. But, and then I just put a cherry <laughs> you just, on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's with an added thing. touch of redundancy. I love it. Um, so uh <laughs> we have some news about Tencent, and that is effectively they took over the Don't Starve franchise. They now are major majority share majority stake hoarders in clean. Stake hoarders. I love it. Stake hoarders. Hey, hoarders. If, there, if there is one thing we can call Tencent, it's that they are stake hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> they well, I, we also say that I'll finish it up with why they're wrong, horns, wrong, but technically cor proper. correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, but they're you now the, formula, but you got the right answer. They're <laughs> the primary stakeholder for Clean Entertainment, who does um, Don't Starve Together. But as of last year, they became stakeholders in 31 different game companies. They are getting their hands in everything now, fucking everything. So, yeah, there's just another acquisition by them. It's, yeah, it is what it is. Man, I got to stop saying yeah, that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Controls coming to Xbox Game Pass. Hey! Um, Adam Excellent spoke game. very highly of this. It. Yeah, big fan. So now hopefully more people get access to it. Because this is the game you said where just hitting people with rocks and environmental shit felt good, right? Yeah, yeah. The telekinesis mechanics are the best I've played in any game, and over the entire game, that was the main ability I used more than anything else, and I never got sick of it. That's awesome. Now, hopefully, more people will get to feel that. Yeah. Um, this is well. Actually, that's all the news we have because what we have left is, uh, hey, Resident Evil Village has uh, May seventh launch date, and Cyberpunk one dot one drops, which we've already talked about. Yep. So, True. Um, rather than rehash stuff, you guys got anything else? I feel like playing some Phasmophobia tonight. I know we're going to grind some Dota, but we should uh, we should jump on Phasmo sometime. 
after the Dota grind's done, I could be convinced to play to Phasma. Phasma. Yeah, because yeah, it's been long enough where I actually kind of want to play Phasma. Like, even not scared, I enjoy the gameplay of Phasma. It's fun. Yeah. It's a good time. Even once you know the mechanics, there's still some angst to it a little bit Ooh. when the hunts happen. We had, I mean, you, you, we had a ghost last night. Um, so one one thing we we ran into there during uh, the tail end of my last Phasmophobia spree was the ghosts were just boring. Like there was a lot where a hunt would happen. We would just like camp in a room. Nothing ever happened or the ghost wasn't active or we couldn't get it to hunt. Like it, it got kind of dull and I, I went out on a semi sour note. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I, when we played yesterday, we didn't run into any of that shit. As a matter of fact, we had to leave without fully knowing what the ghost was because it would not stop attacking us like constantly. It actually got sort of annoying with how active the ghost became. Uh, so it looks like they are tweaking a lot more behavior too, which I like to see. Yeah, that's that's really cool to see him mm -hmm. doing more of that. What? Yeah, I kind of wouldn't said. mind playing it either, actually. All right. If I still have it installed, I might have uninstalled it at some point. I'll oh. check. It's not a I huge mean, game or anything, that, but yeah, it. it might it might take a minute. Well, I was more of the ooh of the what that meant for the game with you. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think when I installed Cyberpunk, I was like. I need to make some room. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I might've, because I might've had it. I, I don't know why I would have had Phasmo on my SSD, but I might've installed it on my SSD, which is not a super big drive or anything. So yeah, you did it. So you could talk to me while we waited for everyone else to load in because it gets boring. Yeah. We'll go with that. Especially with going to call him out. Chewy in his long ass fucking load times. If he loads it all. <laughs> So he's playing on the LG refrigerator. Give him a break. Yeah, no shit. But anyway, I think that's all we got. Scary so. how, how energy efficient that fridge is. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so if you're watching us on Twitch, thank you. We have YouTube where we put all of our top plays. We put our podcast and when I'm not lazy, even some clips from time to time. Uh, so you can go over there on YouTube of 72 Pin Connector and find us. If you're watching us over there, let it be known every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time, we have our podcast live on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. You can come in, be part of the chat, ask us questions, be in the conversation. You can jump into our fucking game lobbies even and just play the game with us. The best way to consume our podcast is live on Twitch. We have a great Discord community, lots of games. Uh, we are clearly a Rocket League community. Lots of that, but recently we've been seeing a lot more games emerge. We always have, but there's definitely been a large spree of more games. Tabletop simulators starting to come back around some more, obviously some Dota and still Rocket League. So you should jump in our Discord. And if you're wondering, well, Eric, how do we get to your Discord? Well, you go to 72pinconnector.com and we have links to everything that we have, including our shop where you should go buy all our sweet swag. And that's it. I think we're going to get out of here with y'all watching that top plays one more time. But yeah. other than that, I think that's all I got for you guys this week. So until next week, game on. See everybody. Fuck you, Dobby. <laughs>